So, hello everyone and thank you for joining us and welcome to this presentation which is part of an ongoing Goose webinar series exploring issues and projects associated with global sustained ocean observing. Uh, my name is Albert Fisher, I'm the director of the Global Ocean Observing System Project Office which is based at the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. Today I'm actually here uh, very appropriately at the World Meteorological Organization based in Geneva and I'll be moderating the webinar today. So for the next hour, we'll start with an approximately 30-minute presentation from Nadi Panardi, who is co-president of the Joint Technical Commission for Oceanography and Marine Meteorology, which is a joint commission between WMO and IOC. Uh, after Nadia's presentation, we'll conduct a question and answer session by chat. So I'll moderate and ask questions verbally. The chat window is open uh, during the presentation. You can see it there as well. Uh, and if you'd like to start asking clarifying questions during the presentation, please go ahead or ask your questions along the way, and I'll ask them at the end if they are more general questions. Uh, so this session is being recorded, and a link to the recording will be posted on the Goose webpage. So Nadia, I will now turn it over to you for your presentation. Thank you very much, Albert, and uh, um, hello to everybody. Thanks for coming uh, to this important webinar series. Um, I will um, try to be as brief as possible, okay? Uh, but I uh, couldn't uh, um, stop uh, thinking that I wanted to give you an introduction on the start of this whole initiative um, in order to understand uh, how far we, wa we are and how better we can go in the future. Um, so I'll talk about the science of ocean predictions and the good start in the 90s, the WMO successful example, and the JCOM start in 1999 with its present mission and organization. The JCOM challenges and future activities will conclude. Um, the, uh, the census also prediction, uh, the first one uh, clearly uh, was meteorology um, that uh, talked about uh, meteorological predictions, uh, but it's interesting to think about the rational method for weather prediction. It's the same rationality that has started the ocean prediction um, in the past, and uh, as you know, there are two paradigms. The first is to have enough ob observations to have the present state of the system as accurate as possible to make a successful forecast and then have a model that projects into the future. And the same two uh, basic 1904 uh, principles are the basis of the International Integrated Ocean Observing System and the Ocean Prediction Services uh, that are being built uh, um, by GOOSE and uh, uh, then JCOM. The, um, uh, so the first two um, to be uh, predicted were the waves. And um, I will show you uh, now a movie, if possible, where we remember, we remind you of the importance of such prediction. Uh. As America mobilized for total war after Pearl Harbor, Monk and a small group of oceanographers uh, worked okay. on plans for Allied landings in North Africa. Uh. Nadi, I'm seeing the movie. Um. They learned so that landing craft were likely to capsize if waves reached a height of six feet. Okay, Nadia, uh, sorry about that. I am seeing the movie, uh, but if you're not seeing it, then let's stop it and let's switch back to the presentation. I'm afraid it's not sure that it's working for everyone. Uh, okay, a lot of people are typing, and I think they're telling us whether they see the, saw the movie. Well, or, they were seeing the movie. Okay, so you people. can hear it, right, Nadia? I have seen the movie many times. So. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to the movie. Everybody not, else can see it for some reason. I don't know why you can. But sorry about as that. soon as uh, so we'll it will stop talking we'll about the first uh, rain forecast, sorry about that. please stop it. Days. And I thought this was a catastrophe in the making. There had never been an attempt to predict. Waves. So the only way out was really to try and make a prediction and pick a couple. of good days to get in and I worked for a while alone on trying to use uh, weather maps to predict the generation of waves and then predict the decay away from the storm areas and finally the transformation of waves as they come into shallow water and then asked Harald Sverdup who was here yes, to get in. and I worked for a while alone on trying to use uh, weather maps to predict the generation of waves and then predict the decay away. Okay, Nadia, I'm going to hand it back to you. So there is uh, Walter Mark And finally, the uh, transformation of waves the as they come into shallow water. And then. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, so the second one were clearly tides and storm surges where the observing system was in place uh, already um, in the 70s uh, uh, as well as much before, but let's say at enough uh, uh, density to be useful for forecasting. And uh, this um, storm surge prediction started already with numerical models in USA and Europe uh, in the 70s. Uh, so the last one to come uh, were the ocean predictions uh, for the ocean weather. Uh, they actually, um, um, the first successful forecast was done in 1983 in real time uh, between Harvard and Monterey. And uh, the key was, uh, again, uh, as usual, was to get enough uh, data to initialize the forecast, uh, high-quality synoptic data, and a skillful model for forecasting. The same, uh, the same principles. OK, so these are the principles that drove uh, GOOS, uh, JCOM, and uh, other initiatives uh, that hopefully I will mention. Uh, to um, organize uh, an international coordination. Um, now, this is uh, the old page of the Global Ocean Observing System. It's an historical GOOS web page, which I was able to keep uh, on my records. And you see that GOOS has, uh, as an aim, to uh, provide accurate descriptions of the present state of the ocean. Uh, co including living resources, continuous forecast of the future conditions of the sea as far ahead as possible, the basis for forecast of climate change. Then, uh, um, and you see here the three principles of Yerkness. Uh, the Global Ocean Observing System is intended to be a permanent global system for observation. So this is where JCOM might uh, come uh, to give a service. Uh, and um, GOOS is being implemented by national and international facilities and services, which is also uh, the support that JCOM uh, gets from member states. Uh, so in practice, uh, uh, I must say, GOOS had the principles of JCOM already written in them. So uh, what happened is that in the 80s, then, uh, uh, actually, in the 90s, more than in the, eight, in the um, 80s, uh, uh, the prediction science got together with uh, the permanent observation uh, system of the, uh, of the ocean with GOOS and uh, uh, adapted a uh, few principles. 
uh, together with the part, uh, the science part, which uh, we have already spoken about. Uh, um, it is uh, important to remember that this uh, um, uh, scheme con uh, um, contains, uh, uh, requires a continuous production of an archive forecast and has to use an incremental approach, which means uh, that something that is feasible should be put in place and working and then uh, this means going generally from larger to coastal, to coastal spa uh, space scales uh, from weekly where we have atmospheric forecast to monthly time scales okay so wouldn't it be nice uh, somebody asked me in some other conference wouldn't it be nice to open the newspaper every day and find out about the ocean weather this is normally we do that by um, find and we find the meteorological weather. Yes, I said, and I think uh, Jcom uh, together with Goose uh, tries to do this, and now with uh, and Jcom means uh, also WMO. So we have uh, four major areas of um, uh, users uh, uh, from climate, seasonal and weather forecasting to the marine and coastal environment, marine and maritime safety, and marine resources. So these are big blocks of users that might uh, get a lot uh, out of having a newspaper ocean weather forecast every day. Uh, so, but what do the user need from ocean observations? Uh, so they need the operational ocean forecasting systems. So observations need to be integrated in value-added products, uh, such as forecast analysis and projections. They need the ocean climate projection and assessments. Uh, so we need to um, analyze the output of these value-added products in order to understand the health status of the ocean um, and uh, take a uh, um, precautionary uh, activity. Um, and then uh, um, uh, observations uh, um, have to be uh, collected with new uh, but uh, internationally based protocols. And all this also uh, users uh, uh, need also new understanding out of these uh, uh, observations and forecasting systems, new understanding coming out. Uh, so ocean process and climate should be understood better as it happened in meteorology. Okay, so a lot of challenging um, needs. Okay, so uh, I think what uh, really attracted me uh, when I thought of uh, working for JCOM was uh, uh, that I could learn a lot from successful examples. Uh, the World Weather Watch is one of the systems that is, has been put in place that works, that is permanent and is real time, is delayed mode and has international standards of data communication, of data protocols and so on. And uh, so uh, I think that JCOM is uh, taking on board that experience, learning from that experience and transforming it for the ocean. Uh, the uh, WMO has also recently uh, revised its uh, information system scheme and now we have the WIS, which not only has GTS but has the internet and has established some metadata protocols uh, a system that connects the centers that provide these value-added products that are so useful for the user needs. Uh, so I think this is a, a good scheme, is a practical scheme, and oceanography should uh, really think where to fit best and what to use best in the interest of meteorology, of marine meteorology and oceanography itself. So this is what, um, sorry, okay, let's see if I can get the, okay. So in 1999, JCOM starts uh, thinking about all this, uh, goose uh, ideas and uh, WMO experience and IOC and the WMO joined the forces 
to uh, really get marine meteorologic and oceanographic observation and data management services and capacity building programs uh, together. Um, three intersessional periods, meaning periods of four years each, uh, have been concluded um, and the structure and the activities of JCOM have been formalized. Um, the vision is to provide international cooperation, not to develop the science, not to develop the technology, but provide international cooperation for integrating uh, meteor marine oceanographic observation, data management and services uh, in order to um, really give um, to end users the best uh, um, the best of the service, okay. So, uh, the strategic priorities, uh, uh, this century challenges are, again, forecasting. Forecasting is still at the uh, front uh, edge of uh, our scientific and operational endeavor. Uh, we need to innovate while we do forecast. Uh, in the observations uh, also, we need to ameliorate and be always at the, um, um, with the best technology. Uh, and we need also to know how to assess, to respond and confine change. So within that, uh, JCOM has, uh, within this scheme, JCOM has also defined five major priorities, weather and ocean forecasting, disaster risk reduction, global framework for climate services, uh, WMO information system implementation, and um, capacity building. Okay, so within these five priorities, there are a lot of activities, uh, uh, which I'll try uh, briefly to explain to you. Uh, so, uh, in doing so, we have to keep in mind that um, JCOM develops best practices and standards uh, for ocean services uh, following the example of WMO, but also giving its own uh, flavor to the question, uh, having had already IOC experience in doing that. Okay, so again, JCOM is at the interface uh, with the big WMO programs, with the big IOC programs, and uh, we're trying to make to maximize the benefit by getting these programs to talk to each other. So the strategic role at JCOM has on one side, on the left side, the science and technology innovation, uh, and on the other side has uh, the users, uh, um, the information needs, and uh, the coordination has to be uh, such that, uh, that we arrive to a permanent system to forecasting uh, of maximum accuracy for the longest time possible and assessments of the ocean state. So the organization is done uh, um, technically to, to preserve some technical capacity into the three traditional areas, the observation program area, data management program area, services and forecast system program area. And each of these areas has several um, technical and expert teams. They are called expert teams. And I will try to overview um, some of the key uh, expert teams for you and some of the successes up to now. Uh, so in the observation program area, OPA, we have the major uh, groups, expert team groups, the um, Ship um, of Opportunity program uh, together, the Voluntary Observing Ship and the Ship of Opportunity, the DBCP, uh, the Data Boy uh, panel, the GLOSS, the Sea Level uh, Network, and the links with the major oceanographic monitoring programs, Argo, Go Ship, Ocean Sites, IOCPP, and EGO, the Glider. Um, uh, and then uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, good uh, and technical talking about real-time uh, data transmission, data management program, um, protocols. This, this uh, area has uh, um, developed JCOMAPS support center, which is a very important uh, 
um, part of the work uh, um, for this area. Uh, I'll show you uh, next uh, slide, uh, the work of this uh, center, very important. Uh, now, the problems that this group has to deal with, in addition to, uh, among others, is the sustainability of the research observational networks. Uh, some of the ones that I've listed are research observational networks. Uh, and then uh, uh, some issues related to real-time data flow toward archiving centers, quality control. So the, um, and these are the uh, five major uh, programs. So Jacob Ops uh, is now active in Brest. There was a very uh, big development in the past uh, three years. Uh, Jacob Ops actually is now stably uh, sit uh, uh, at Brest uh, in France uh, at the Ephemer campus and um, it is an observing system support center. It will uh, be the reference point for the status of the global observing platforms in general and it will help uh, to uh, foresee the future implementation and deployment uh, of multi-platform observations around the world. So this is a success story for sure. Uh, it is needed uh, and uh, from science to operations, you can have now a center that will help you to decide where to put your next Argo floats uh, or how to um, you know, use protocols for, uh, um, doing this, uh, uh, for deploying your instrument uh, uh, at the best of our knowledge. So now the, um, from the data management program area, we have uh, uh, the famous uh, expert team on data management practices that is um, taking its experience from uh, the IODE, um, the International Ocean Data Exchange Program of IOC, which has a, a decadal uh, experience in uh, uh, data, trans data exchange uh, and management practices. Uh, here we have also expert team on marine climatology, um, ocean data standards, ocean teacher academy, um, a lot of work done for capacity building. Um, and here we have several problems as in the other program areas. Uh, we need to think about a system that will have national oceanographic data center uh, put in place together with oceanographic services and the WMO system, which provides the very many uh, data uh, and then linkages to users. Uh, so this is uh, the start of this very important group, uh, which uh, is based upon the cooperation between IODE and JCOM, um, and uh, that sets uh, the standards uh, for data management uh, in JCOM. So then uh, in the service and forecasting system program area, we have uh, um, expert team on marine safety services, expert team on waves and coastal hazards. Uh, these are really the heart of the tradition uh, in forecasting, as we have seen. Um, uh, then we have uh, CI's service. This is a very much a user-driven expert team uh, subdivision. And we have the newest, uh, the new expert team on Operation Ocean Forecasting Services that is part of um, a positive action um, out of the connection with the GODE uh, and JCOM. And uh, naturally, uh, here we have to always keep in mind the relationship with ocean users for requirements and uh, uh, the connection with the uh, Goose Regional Alliances or RUSES uh, that are, uh, um, you know, making the actual implementation uh, of these systems. Now, uh, the, um, I just uh, show you this uh, team works uh, on uh, uh, projects, has lots of valuable projects. Uh, in this case, uh, this, is the pro this is the list of projects of the expert team on CIS. And uh, so the people uh, develop uh, electronic chart display information systems, uh, um, uh, maintain and update uh, CIS technical documentation. Uh, this is very important uh, uh, group. 
um, that has lots of experience, is one, one of the first expert teams of JCOM in uh, program area. So uh, challenges and future for JCOM. First, I'd like to say I really think that we should uh, uh, try in the near future to look for an overall strategy, how to properly interface uh, the IOC systems uh, that you have seen here mixed uh, with the WMO one um, into the WMO information system. So how do we uh, use uh, the powerful experience of the, the wheels uh, for a common data exchange platform as a common data exchange uh, uh, metadata platform. And uh, here I have a table which was shown to me by somebody recently, which I found interesting. So on the left, we have the current centers. We have national med centers, world meteorological centers, uh, national oceanographic data centers, operational oceanographic centers. And then we should define how these are, and the meteorologists are already doing, um, their part for the national centers. Uh, they will be called no more um, national med centers, but the World Meteorological Centers will be called uh, General Information System Centers or Data Collection and Production Centers. And uh, we should really, and you know, each of these terms, as you can imagine, has a meaning in terms of functions, activities, and the protocols. So now uh, my hope is that very soon we will be able to find a place for our infrastructure, the oceanography. Graphic infrastructure, uh, which is formed by an ODC, uh, an ODC is Operational Oceanography Centers and International Operational Oceanography Centers. Okay, so this is one uh, challenge for the future. Now, the other challenge is uh, to better coordinate internationally to develop downstream services for disaster risk reduction. We really need to show the importance of this integrated serving and forecasting system to solve problems, uh, especially in the case of uh, risks, uh, coastal area, inundation and um, such as this uh, scheme shows you. And then last, uh, my last slide is uh, coordinate internet, continue to coordinate international in order to incorporate results from research into operations. We have already very good relationship with God A uh, and uh, the member state operational systems. Uh, uh, we need to strengthen that relationship. This is the site where mostly the most technical and science-oriented discussion occurs for the forecasting system. Thank you very much, Nadia, for and the presentation. For the and the I'll system. open it to we questions to uh, from the floor. More and more and with the, Jacob. Oops, the chat and the GOOS, which is not only developing the GOOS regional new. alliances. Um, so if you have a question for Nadia, please type it into the areas, chat window, uh, and I'll get started um, with a, a few questions of my own. Again, biology you for the presentation. You um, talked about ocean weather and, uh, forecasts and having uh, okay, ocean weather be something that appears as ubiquitously as as meteorological, as atmospheric weather in a daily paper. Um, what do you think a forecast should look like and does it look different for different audiences? Yeah, um, well, yes, this is a very good question. In fact, uh, uh, while the weather, the atmospheric weather is something familiar, uh, so we don't need a lot of transformation from uh, raw forecasting numerical data to um, people, even though now even forecasting needs a lot of visualization effort. For the ocean, we really need, really need uh, more uh, uh, dedicated effort to transform uh, the information 
and make it available to the different users in uh, uh, a specialized way to make it understandable. Uh, so what I call the downstream services are a very important thing to develop, as well as the so-called core okay. and, services. Uh, so let me um, ask you uh, so, some of the questions that are, are popping I up think from that, our participants. Uh, at the end, um, Dennis uh, Chang Seng from IC Secretary asks you about how we can organize ourselves to address the, the three challenges that you highlighted. Um, I think he's talking Should about the challenges related to delivering to uh, ocean uh, information for uh, disaster risk reduction, for the management of uh, marine resources, uh, for climate. Um, users. Um, well, uh, now we have in place, uh, you know, Goose, we have in place uh, uh, JCOM, uh, a very uh, good relationship with, through JCOM uh, with WMO that has a lot of experience in that. Uh, we could, in my opinion, uh, uh, just so let me ask you, let me explore a little bit more about that topic. The, uh, so on the meteorological side, there are MET services that are the operational that deliver a weather forecast and basic uh, meteorological information that's uh, used in a service. What are the structures that you see developing at the national level on the ocean side, um, and, and are they prepared the for that challenge of delivering for these multiple areas of observation users? system and uh, um, forecasts? Um, well, uh, as you know, I, I think that uh, we are ready. Um, major uh, countries are, have uh, on their um, national uh, realities that they have uh, oceanographic centers taking on board operations. Uh, some other countries have uh, incorporated ocean services within MET offices. Uh, so there are different solutions. There is not one solution for all uh, countries, but at the end of the day, what is important is in order to do, um, you know, to advance in this field, you need to get the oceanographic community to participate to the building of the operational system, because this is where the technical capacity is. Um, until you know, uh, it was a question of waves. Uh, the uh, med, med community uh, begin to do the work uh, uh, and operationally. But now the question is, waves are part of the ocean forecasting. They actually help. Uh, the ocean forecast, the ocean weather forecast, because uh, what is really interesting is to have the is to have the ocean stocks drift uh, together with the ocean currents uh, in order to serve our users, the coast guards and the oil spill um, people um, defending our coast. So I think what uh, um, we have several examples. All examples are with very strong collaboration between Met Office and oceanographic competence, which might be a national oceanographic data center uh, in the country. But not only that, we have the GRAs. Uh, and that is the other point. Um, you cannot make it all by yourself. You need really to get uh, at the level of the um, regions uh, 
uh, to in order Actually, yeah. to, let me ask um, a question from Peter Dexter. He says, what uh, do you see as the tactical rather than the strategic priorities for so JCOM, for example, operational motion forecasting, coastal inundation prediction? Office, uh, maintaining a strong uh, competence in oceanography. And then the second is having a regional uh, international uh, forum where to discuss uh, the best implementation issues. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the tactical uh, uh, parts, uh, as I said, it might be different from country to country. What we have to, uh, I think, uh, um, envisage. Uh, I think the most important part at this stage is to um, have uh, um, uh, policymakers understand that doing operations in as in meteorology is not a, a simple uh, um, action of a few people uh, and then uh, it's repeat uh, repeating work every day. But it is uh, um, in our field, it is get the best innovations, uh, get the best instrumentation to be cost efficient. And that means that research has to be close to operations, has to be close. Uh, the meteorology is a wonderful example. I Are think the met meteorological forecast uh is one of, uh, in a paper I just read, one of the silent revolutions of our uh, past century, we have revolutionized. We produce, uh, we meteorologists produce uh, data that are useful for. So you talked a lot about using op um, operational meteorology as a model in terms of the way they organize their data systems, for example. But do you think there are any fundamental know, differences that, between I mean, oceanography maybe, uh, and what we're trying to do with operational you know, oceanography and meteorology? Do you think you it, there's parts of it that will have to follow really a different trajectory? And operations in the right proportion in order to have them strengthen each other. Yeah, well, for sure, um, as I said, we have always to respect the competence uh, uh, that has to come when you talk about uh, a specific component of the Earth system. Um, we are not uh, competent everywhere, so we need to... Uh, there are differences. I don't, uh, to tell you the truth at this point, uh, um, I think it's a matter more of uh, um, getting uh, the right approach, which has uh, the right timing between research. Um, let me ask you uh, Eric Winstrom's question. If you could change one thing about JCOM, what would that be? Of this uh, system. Now we are still uh, too slow to operationalize uh, systems and get a feedback into the research. Uh, so, I, I think it's fundamentally not very difficult, different, and even in the deep ocean, even in the deep ocean. Yeah, so, <laughs> but... Eric is always, uh, as usual, getting a point. Now, what will it be? Um, I think the, the one thing that I would change is uh, um, the um, interconnection, the connection um, between uh, the uh, national uh, member states, uh, oceanographic centers and so on, and, uh, and JCOM. Uh, at this stage, uh, we actually um, are lacking 
behind the, in my opinion, the uh, necessary feedback from uh, uh, IOC member states uh, to uh, JCOM. Um, the Met offices are organized. So what I would try to uh, in the future, uh, hope that, that we will have a structure emerging that will be much more efficient to bring member state needs uh, into JCOM uh, together uh, with the Met offices. Now still Met offices are too separated from oceanographic institutions doing uh, their work and uh, without having one above the other and so Isn't there a bit of a chicken and egg problem, Nadia, in the sense that uh, in order to have so strong national structures uh, from the oceanographic uh, perspective that can articulate no user needs, they have to be able to deliver useful services, services, which are still uh, uh, often in the research and realm and being developed. So, so how do you accelerate that process at a national uh, level? And what can JCOM able, specifically uh, do to um, help that? Debate Uh, well, JCOM can do a lot. My experience is uh, coming in the Med, in the Mediterranean. Uh, from the beginning, we had uh, uh, downstream services built together with the forecasting services. Never just the forecast services, but I see now everywhere the same tendency. In the MED, we started uh, a bit earlier. Why? Because we had nothing to build on. So it was easier. When you have a long tradition, such as in storm surge uh, or uh, already services doing a lot of work, uh, very difficult to come and say, we should change or we should do another thing. But so in the MED, however, the success was that we built the core services together with the downstream always and some people okay. said it was crazy and in some ways you're talking about right, developing uh, capacity right. at the national level Even so let me ask a question from uh, Sekuti and uh, Bangura um, this in this decade what do you plan incremental. for the West African region about so this JCOM you know program how to do to your, your forecast. idea of working you at build the that level. user community to use your forecast and then maybe you evolve your storm surge from a two-dimensional barotropic model to a three-dimensional one that also talks about currents. So I would do that. Yeah, uh, we have big uh, ideas for that. Uh, we just, you know, our, um, Jacob did a step, I think, which was interesting, uh, which was the, the um, capacity building. And I like that. Uh, capacity building was uh, inside the different program areas, not as a separate entity. That makes it very practical. So what I would say is that Goose Regional Alliance should uh, see what JCOM can, can offer in different parts of its program areas and ask JCOM um, the advice and the expertise uh, for the selected issue. Um, to start with uh, an overall uh, issue is very difficult. So it's better to have a, a dedicated project either to buoys. And for or somebody who is interested in some of the topics that JCOM is working on, how can they actually from, uh, contact JCOM and start to work on some of these things? How do they work with an expert team? How do they work with their national uh, so, representative into uh, their ICNW? You know, it depends. So JCOM should be uh, there to answer uh, these requests and hopefully not only the national center requests, but also the GRA requests. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is uh, uh, the the problem. Maybe uh, I should have answered the Eric Lindstrom before. We are a bit remote from uh, the real people life. And also we are most of us uh, doing this on a voluntary basis uh, because we feel is important and I'm still very much convinced of that. Uh, but uh, it is very much, uh, uh, is very difficult to have a, a single person contact. Now we have Gcom apps uh, for kind of infrastructure that can partially answer that uh, for the observing system. Uh, now for the um, forecasting system, the data management practices, uh, um, we have uh, first uh, the Ocean Teacher Academy for the data management and also for the uh, service area. Uh, has already good experience, but we should strengthen that part. Um, again, it would be best if this would come through a regional alliance. So let me ask, continue Something asking some questions that, that have popped up uh, related to the regional aspect, aspects, and then I'll come back to some of the other questions. Larger, that, uh, so uh, there's a question from uh, Krista von Hillebrandt. Uh, how do you really envision the integration of small uh, island developing um, states? They are extremely vulnerable uh, to me, ocean and coastal related and, uh, hazards. I would be glad uh, many of the established uh, uh, tsunami warning systems also include other possible. hazards. Who represents uh, this community in the ETWCH in JCOM? Now, um, uh, I don't know in details, uh, ETWCH. No, I think the question uh, is about how, how do small island developing states and their concerns and issues get um, addressed uh, through the ETWCH, I know that, uh, through the addressing of multiple uh, multi-hazard and multi-hazard approach, uh, um, not just tsunami. Uh, tsunami. Do I understand well the question, uh, Albert, is the, uh, is the question uh, who represents tsunami in the ETC? The, in the um, oh, okay. Now, uh, I think here the uh, experience is actually very, uh, very good. The ETWCH has had uh, uh, spa uh, funding, specific funding, to do projects uh, in small islands, uh, developing states. Uh, so I would, in this specific case, uh, I think is um, uh, really uh, important to get in touch with uh, ETWCH and see if maybe something has already been done for them. Now, uh, again, this is uh, a yeah. We had issue. Um, so we could probably point uh, to the uh, WMO-led uh, projects which the ETWCH has been quite projects, involved in, in, in but, uh, coastal forecast. I think um, in particular, demonstration ETWCH of our coastal inundation has been successful in the past, um, which have been uh, taking and place I've in seen in some of the many, many and projects some other very successful that are with multi in a, a multi-risk... Uh, um, let me ask, um, there's two questions framework. that are related to requirements and uh, observing requirements. Um, first one is from uh, Mikhail Rattenborg. Uh, satellites are increasingly important for ocean prediction. How can we improve the interactions with the space agencies to ensure that you have the data you need from space with the quality and timeliness you need? What, what is JCOM doing about that? Well, 
This is a very another very important point. We restarted a group which was, is a task team on satellite uh, within JCOM. This is really a crucial point because nothing can be done in ocean forecasting as well as in meteorological forecasting without satellites. So, um, in fact, uh, I have big hopes that by next year we will have an overview of uh, satellite oceanographic satellite requirements from this group. Uh, okay. and, and then we have a, a question from Neville team. Esso, I think it must be Not Neville Smith. Uh, one of the trends that is emerging uh, as we speak is expanded is use of coupled models for numerical weather prediction, an expert with significant impacts anywhere there is strong coupling. Uh, will NWP will have requirements for ocean observations, for and the demarcation between ocean and met forecasting will blur. Are the, uh, there implications uh, for JCOM from this trend? Thank you, Neville. Uh, yes, I, I think there are implications, but my um, the, here I get my uh, conceptual framework, with, um, which is this incremental framework. We have to show benefit on the short time scales, which normally is the one, uh, the least coupled one, and uh, because uh, uh, we need to. Um, put in place, set in place, uh, uh, maximum utilization of our serving system to get better initial conditions. This is useful also for the coupled models. Then we have to go to coupled data simulation. Now, coupled data simulation is an issue that many research groups is still a research issue. Without data simulation, we cannot really talk about the forecast. Uh, or at least, um, and then we have uh, conceptual problems on the uh, barrier of predictability, which is the few months time scales. Which um, so overall, just to be uh, shorter, um, while this question really requires a lot of discussion, my impression is that we will build uh, for the success of the coupled forecast. Uh, um, in the next 10, 20 years. Now we have a period in which we have to stabilize the uncoupled system. Um, uh, we have to stabilize the assimilation and get best, uh, um, you know, operational uh, satellite and in situ systems to become operational, fully shared within the community, also the science community. Um, and get better models, ocean models. We're still lacking accuracy in our models. Um, and so the, uh, to wrap up, uh, uh, trying to wrap up, uh, we have, uh, in my opinion, very good progress to go uh, in parallel with the coupled for the next 10, to 10 20 years uh, to show benefit from a global observing system a integrated uh, meteor marine and oceanographic system, uh, which is partly uncoupled. We, we have that, uh, in my opinion, and we should probably uh, try to um, really develop the research well within the research uh, issues for the coupled one, so we don't fail. We know the failure sometimes claimed for the... So now you, you mentioned um, in, in uh, talking about research also the is, uh, uh, some of the fragility of the uh, observation because, systems, which are funded, the observing networks, which are funded by research. So and one of the challenges for JCOM really is to system, bring the worlds of research and operations uh, a little bit closer together. Coupled, um, in this context uh, of coupled uh, forecasting, is that, that are not um, solved. how can that challenge really be addressed by JCOM and, and how do we do bring those research and, uh, and operational organizations closer together?
Yeah, this is an area, as you know, and uh, Albert, you are a major player here uh, due to your knowledge and the connections uh, between the, all the programs. This is an area where we must give a, um, a contribution. We must have a contribution. We are uh, very lucky that we are also, we have the chair of the program area, that is Dr. David Legler uh, from NOAA who has uh, enormous experience in this, we have to get uh, uh, this operationalization. I'm taking the word from Eric Lindstrom. Uh, operationalization of research, uh, of serving networks. We have to uh, find a way. Now, the specific tactical issues for this or implementation issues. Do you have any success uh, stories you could point to I, in that area I where, go uh, now into the where details. sort of an operational neurological service has really taken this issue? Uh, we need to have priorities. We certainly have to uh, see what is the observing system that is next, next coming and that can become operational and take it on yeah, board example, and yeah. push our governments to take it on board. So. Uh, yes, in uh, Europe. And um, uh, I'm not going to be able to ans ask offices, all the questions, and so thank you to the audience for all the, the vigorous number of questions. There's been two questions about so um, about really the operational to, coverage, uh, uh, the observing Argo, coverage in the polar regions, about the Southern the Ocean and the Arctic. Uh, you know, um, do you see JCOM becoming more active in yeah, these regions in the I future? I think so. We have many examples. I really hope so. We also have a co-president, uh, Dr. Um, Johan Stander from South Africa, who uh, is very much pushing in that uh, direction. And uh, hopefully... Okay. Um, Thank you very much, Nadia. We're pretty much we out of time, and I haven't been able to ask all the questions. I'm sorry about that. Thank you to the audience for having joined us and asked so many interesting questions. And thank you to Nadia we know how for having uh, answered so, uh, the It's always in our agenda. We have, questions. we have few um, options. And, uh, and hopefully they will be ready next year when we go to JCOM 5. <laughs> All right. Well, we have an active program of them. So if you'd like to be informed about the upcoming Goose webinars and other Goose and JCOM news, um, please uh, join our mailing list, which you can join on the Goose uh, website. Okay. And that's it's where the future will be. Thank you for coming. And I hope Thank to you see very you much again. again, Nadia. This is great. Thank you, webinars, everyone. Uh,